weekend? No, we've got one or two knocks. The uh, one or two lads had a virus, which uh, still recovering from. So uh, we we'll have to wait until tomorrow to see uh, how everybody is. And might you have to rotate your squad over the course of the Christmas period? Yeah, with too many games, I think as well. So um, it's something we have to look at. Uh, I think that's that's normal. And how are players that aren't in the A team at the moment dealing with that? They've been great. Everybody's um, not one not one problem. They've all done really well in training, but I can only pick 18. But over this period of time, that I'm pretty sure everybody will get a run at it. So we need everybody, as I said before. And to be fair, they play a, they're a very close group. They've gone really well. And that's, that's half the battle. They, they've gone really well. And the way that those players deal with that disappointment of not being involved in the day must have a big impact around the place at any club. If there are people that are kind of kicking up a stink and causing problems, that sort of thing can spread, can't it? I'm very fortunate I've not seen that here. That's a beauty about this club. It's got really good guys there and uh, everybody's in it together. And as I said before, not one not one minute of any day that I've been given a problem. Is Teo OK? He had a little bit of time back at Fulham because of an eye problem, wasn't it? No, he's, he, he's still, still back at Fulham. His eye still giving him problems, so... Uh, Theo won't be around for a few weeks anyway, that's for sure. Has he still got a chance in the second half of the season? Have you no thoughts of kind of dispensing with his services and sending them back? I don't know yet. Uh, what, what we'll do, as I said before, we need to try and get people in before I let people out. Tristan Nydam was saying in the last couple of days he's looking forward to getting back and creating an impression. Mm. Have you kind of canvassed opinion on what he can offer? How much do you know about him? No, I, I know he's obviously up at uh, St Johnston, but I don't think... Listen, we, we need a bit of experience, without a doubt, in this, this football club. We've got... A really young side. If you look at our team, a lot of the lads haven't played championship football, let alone anything else. So uh, we need a little bit more more experience on that side of it. How hard is it going to be to judge some of the lads that are out on loan? Because you won't be focusing on St Johnston or no. Swindon or Shrews. Would you have to trust other people's judgment on some of these boys? Yeah, but that, that I'll get that from the people who've worked with the lads more, that, they've worked here and, and the opposition managers who, who work under or who they work under. But we we need. We need a little bit of help, and that's uh, and it's unfair to ask kids. Now, as I said before, you can't ask kids to carry a can. It's, it's, it's dangerous, it's difficult, it's no good for them, no good for the development of them. We need a little bit of help. Another one who's out on loan is clearly a player for the future, Ben Morris. That must be nice. You must see a prospect there. He's got this new deal. Yeah, but I've also got to think of the long term for this football club. And, and as I said before, you, it's, it's an impossibility to ask the kids to, to do anything other than keep developing. We, we, need, we need help in this football club too. We've got experience in it and that's something I'll focus on. Another Ben, there was talk of Ben Marshall the other week for obvious connections, your time, you had him at Wolves, you had him at Blackburn, might that be a loan target for January? Yeah, listen, they, they, we, you can link us with anybody you want <laughs> and the, where the names come from is, uh, is bizarre, some of the names, it just makes me laugh. Because some of it's so, out of this planet, you think there's no way it's going to happen. I know Ben really well because he plays under me if you're going to do that, you may as well link everybody else that's played under me here. You know? Would it be feasible to take a Norwich player on loan in general terms, do you think, or would that be too close? It doesn't matter to me where the players come from. If they're good players and I think they can they can help us, it doesn't matter to me. It's, it's, it's what they can do for this club. And they want. First and foremost, you need players that want to be here. That's, that's uh, number one. Uh, but whether the player plays for Norwich or however, it don't matter to me. And just in general, are you getting positive vibes about some of the, the players you're trying to bring in? Do you think deals are getting closer? Uh, the money that people are asking for is ludicrous. It's outrageous, some of it. So we have to look at that. And, uh, but we have to, as I said before, we have to try and work really hard to try and get people in. Does Marcus understand that? Do you think he will be flexible and per perhaps loosen the purse strings maybe a bit more than he'd wished in an ideal world? Yeah, but you're still talking a hell of a lot of money on top of things. So, uh, as I said, well, we'll never put the club in danger. Never do that till do that. I think it's right for the club, and I think what's what's right for for us. First and foremost, foremost, I have to get people that want to come here. Number two, the the salaries and, and everything that goes with loans is uh, is incredible. Some of the things. So um, as I said before, I won't I won't put the club in danger. Do you think that's going to be a hard sell because of the league table, because of geography, to get the right players in here over the next six weeks? I think there's a lot of things. But you also get people that want to come here because they're a really good club. I mean, they're playing really well at, at this moment in time. But you've got to try and do the right thing for the club as well. As I said before, it's, you can't little a dressing room full of people that's not going to make an impact to play. Then you have your own problems. People that don't really want to be here, all those sort of things that, that can happen. So 
I'll just wait and see next next uh, few weeks. I guess you'd be confident of bringing somebody if you can meet them face to face, maybe show them around here, tell them about your vision, what you're doing here. That would mm. give you a better chance. Yeah, that, that gives you a chance. Yeah, but as I said before, you've got to remember when you go for a loan, it's not just the, the simple as you're going to come here. The loan fees and wages and all those sort of things come into play. So um, yeah, we we have to work we, as hard as we can to get the right one. In. Any further forward in Jonas's future? You said the other week that ball was kind of in Marcus's court. You've extended Freddie's deal. Is there any movement on your left back? No, I think there's talking and all that as well. So, uh, as I said, that was before my time, before I came in. I know Jonas has been here for a little while now and uh, all those sort of things should have been probably ironed out. But they weren't. And, uh, yeah, I know Marcus has spoken to Jonas, so I, that's, that's as far as it went. Is Miles pushing him hard? Has he impressed you the last few weeks now he's been back to fitness? He's been off. My, Miles is one of the ones that was off of the virus, but he's uh, he's just back this today. So he's, I think Miles is is, uh, is a good player. He's only a young a young kid, 21 years old. So um, but he's a good player. I know he's played some games, but um, match fitness is just a little bit down. You've always said the last few weeks without the win that confidence has been good, morale mm. has. There's been a buzz around this place, but last week must have lifted things even further, mustn't it? Yeah, well, the feeling you get, even when I go to the stadium, everybody's right behind it. Everybody that works here, everybody at the stadium, everybody's right behind it. I said we, we can see it, see it slowly but surely turning, which is which is great. And uh, five points, it's nothing. I said that a long time ago. You have a good week in the championship, you tend to find yourself starting to move places. You've always said it's not about you, it's about the football mm. club, it's about the supporters. But on a personal level, Paul, that must have pleased you to get your first win last week. Yeah, but the, 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 a lot of things, when I look at the game of football, is, is the way the lads are playing and their commitment to it and the, their drive and their energy to play the game of football. Young lads that they want to try and do well. and I think they've improved as individuals. I think they've improved as a team. And the, the way they're playing, I can't ask any more effort. Or the way they're playing, the way they're trying to do it, they're, they're making every decision I'm asking to make, they make it. Make me mistakes, yeah, but that's no problem. That's my problem. It's not their fault. I'm asking me to play this this certain way, and they've took to it, and uh, I'm really, really pleased with the way they're playing. Do you think these four games over Christmas could have a sizable bearing on where you end up this season? You've got kind of the two away bookend of the home game. As I said before, you should have asked that question in August. That, that's where your season starts. Your season doesn't start in November, December, or October. It starts, it starts in August. And we've come in five, five months behind it, but we're slowly but surely catching up with the actual. Your season, I don't, I don't, I don't care what anybody says. Your season starts when you start pre-season. That's when your season starts. I mean, look at Sheffield United. You look at a club that it shows you don't simply need to throw millions at a promotion push at this level. Don't need to throw millions at it. It's getting the right player, but they've got good, experienced Championship players. If you look at our team, Drizel, young kid, eighteen, nineteen, Flynn, eighteen, nineteen, Chalaber, eighteen, nineteen, Lancaster, eighteen, nineteen, Bishop, just twenty-two, just came back from two years out. It's it's incredible how how. Uh, how young we are, when, uh, and these kids should have came into a team where there's one or two coming in, but not not as many as we've got. But they're they're actually carrying a lot of a lot of weight on their shoulders, but they've done they've done brilliant at it. Do you think Sheffield United are in it for the long haul in terms of a promotion push? You probably are asking Chris that whether they can do it or not. But I know they're a good side. There's a lot of championship experience, so they have. So uh, it's a, t- a tough game. They've had a lad here who scored goals for fun for this club and ended up at Sheffield United. So it's going to be a difficult game. They play a good game. But we're playing well to go and try and win. Is he a player that you've admired down the years, David McGoldrick, coming up against him? He's a goal scorer. Goal scorers are worth a main goal. You tend to find the goal scorers that uh, make the most money because they can put the ball in net. They play three at the back. Does that alter your thinking in terms of the way you approach the game and set up? Perhaps do you have to bear that in mind? I know we will we'll try and play. So, uh, yeah, where they play three or four, we, <laughs> we try and do our own way, our own game. I respect what Sheffield United have got, but. I've got a great belief in my own team to go and play the way the way asking me to play, so we'll go and try and try and win. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you. I might be wrong, Paul, but it sounds like there's a little sense of frustration around the business so far. Maybe it's not quite been as easy as you you hoped it would be. Or I've been involved. No, no, I've been involved in this game for years. I'm, I know the way it works. I know the way January works. I've had done this before, so it doesn't. I don't lose sleep over it. I don't get stressed over it. I don't worry about it. But as what it is, and. and but we try, the club's trying everything they can to bring players in. To some of the names I see, I think, where people pluck them from is incredible. And uh, they said the salaries and all those sort of things. But whoever comes in here, you want them in for the right reasons. It's, uh, 
the giant event, another, as I said, I never get caught up in that because I know the way it's, uh, it can go. People obviously know that you need players and then perhaps the price goes up accordingly. Yep. Yeah. Can you afford to kind of play the negotiating game right up until the end of January because you've said before you want them in sooner, aren't they? Yeah, ideal, an ideal world you try and get them in before it's kicked, but you can't, you can't let the club go into a dangerous position financially. That, that's suicidal. It's, uh, you can't let it happen because the clubs can just go to the wall when it's, it's no right. That We've got a duty of care for the football club as well. But what we'll, we'll try and get guys in here that one want to be here first and foremost, but you've also got the jumping over the hurdle of finances, which is uh, it's, um, can be pretty pretty brutal at times. In terms of players wanting to be here, have you spoken to any directly yet who have said don't really don't really fancy it? Actually, thank you. No, I've not spoken to anybody directly because no, no, nothing like that at all. I know Mark has done a lot of work behind the scenes to try and get uh, people in, so uh, that's ongoing, and uh, we'll see. We'll see in the next few weeks uh, who comes and who, who doesn't. And I guess the sell to these players, perhaps if they're not getting game time at their current clubs, is yeah. that you can come in and be a key player that's going to yeah. start most games and that you've got a chance to really you know, be part of something big here. Is, is that what the sell will be to the players? Well, basically, that, that'll be it. They come and they, they come and help us. I think that's that's evident. We need, we need a little bit of help. Uh, in, in a lot of areas of the pitch, not just forward areas, but a lot of areas we need, because we're a really young side, we need that, that experience of it uh, to, to help us through that this period of, of a lot of games. And uh, yeah, once they're down here, I'm pretty sure we'll love it. I don't expect you to put a number on it publicly, but do you have a number of signings in mind that, that you would like? In yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've, you've said before that perhaps sometimes doing no business can be just as effective as mm -hmm. doing some business, mm -hmm. but doing business for the sake of it can be, yeah. can be damaging. But do you think that, has that number changed in your mind since you've been here? Do you need more than you, you first No, no, I still, I still thought the figure I had was roughly going to be about right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as I said, the squads that, when they came, I thought it was unbalanced. It's set in a lot of areas of the pitch. It's top heavy in some, and it's very, very low in, in others. So, uh, but I still think, the number of players we need is, is a figure I still think we need. Mm. And the decisions on whether to recall some of your loans and whether to send back some of your loans, those decisions won't be made until you start to slot uh, some of the other yeah, we, yeah, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't even give it a second thought, let, let people out here because we, in the moment we need everybody here and until somebody comes through, through the door, then uh, Again, it'll be, it'll be a crazy decision to let people out. Is Jordan Graham an exception to that because he's been training with Oxford and? No, Jordan won't be. Jordan won't be back. No. Okay. No, no. So that, that's one that's a decision made on, but the yeah, yeah. Is still up in the air. So. Yeah, Taylor's still got the injury, but he's obviously with his eye. So. Mm. And you talked before about winning being a contagious bug mm. and, and how momentum can yeah. really build. Um, you hope obviously that last weekend kick starts that really. Um, mm. How important is this as a follow-up game to kind of? back up last weekend's result and make sure that you know, you're, you're not back to square one in many ways? Yeah, we, we, we go against a really good side who have performed ever so well over this season. They're probably more experienced than us. But, well, they are because of the, the young ones we've got, but we're playing really well at the minute. As I said before, you can never predict the result, but we'll be ready for the game, that, that's for sure. And, uh, it was a tough game, but if we can stick a freaking build on last week, it'll be... It'll be great for us, and it'll, it'll look a lot more, a lot more rosier. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about Ellis Harrison. He, he's come back from mm. from that ankle injury. He's come off the bench a couple of times, but in the follow-up game, he's he's not even been in the squad. Mm. So is, is that injury related? What what's the situation with Ellis? No, no, we've, we've got to balance it. I can't. We've got, we have to. We've got to try and balance the bench out as well. Ellis done well. I thought when he came on it, uh, came on at Stoke, I left it out. Caden was uh, unwell at Stoke. And Ellis was on the bench and done well. And then I thought Caden might have been appropriate for the Wigan game. So I'll just pick and choose what I think is going to be beneficial on that day for, for the benefit of the team. And you talked about the, the, the schedule mm. coming up and there's too many games, I think you said at the start. What's your thoughts on a winter break and someone who's played in Germany mm. and you, you look to Germany and they, they have winter breaks and yeah. things like that? What, what's your thoughts on all of that? I've, I've been asked that question about a million times. Yeah. That, and they, it's, uh, for me, the winter breaks, 
it's the best way going forward. It's, it's brilliant because it, it gets everybody refreshed, it, everybody at the club, players, even supporters, you guys as well. It gives everybody a break from it and people recover and can go and have time with their families. I'm fortunate enough as I've, I've experienced that, so I know exactly what it's what it's like. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, Kevin, I um, over the last couple of seasons, brands have, have kind of shown that it doesn't take loads of money. Are they a kind of model that other clubs should be looking to? Other clubs that are less moneyed in this division? I don't know. A lot, a lot, a lot of the. A lot of your big factors recruitment. I think that's well documented. Recruitment is vital to who you can get in. That's uh, there's that, and you've got finances, all those sort of things. But recruitment's number one priority. Who you can get in, and what what type of player you want, whether Sheffield United have a chance this year. I don't know. There's a lot of strong, long, strong teams. Long way to go. So uh, whether. And I'm not sure anybody really wants to copy anybody. You want to be your own, have your own identity. I think that's important. There's no point in copying anybody else. It's, it's like me coming here, I want that's what, to have their own identity on it. So, I mean, there's a lot of kind of talk about budgets and that kind of thing in this division, but when you see teams like Sheffield United at the top end of the division at Huddersfield, so three years ago, getting promoted, it, it kind of does give clubs like Ipswich a bit of... Uh, it can be done. You need a lot, yeah, it, it can be done. You need a little bit of luck in a lot of aspects of it as well. There's a lot of money in the division. The Championship was a knock on effect to Premier League. So, how much money is invested in Premier League and has a knock down effect on the Championship? That's the way the game is going now. So, um, but it doesn't guarantee you everything. The money doesn't guarantee you everything. It's your team spirit, and you can get players, that, as I said before, know the league a little bit as well, which is important. I think any division has to have its own players that know the league, then you've got a better chance of it, but you've, you've got to get the equipment right. You've got another legend in today, Russell Yeah, brilliant, yeah. yeah. We invited him down away at the beginning, and uh, he couldn't do it due to his, his other commitments, but uh, Russell came in and uh, brilliant. Uh, as I said before, that along with Terry and all them guys, George and Mick Mills and, and uh, John Watt, uh, there's people that grew up in my era, and who are important to the club. So I've always said that, and I'll, I'll say it until the day I leave the club. They, they, they people are really important to the club and, and should never have ever been left out. That's my opinion. They should, they should be close to them because of what they've done for the football club. And I imagine you're firmly backing the Kevin Lucas Sassy project as well. Well, I think when you have iconic players or managers, whatever, and they do, it's incredible. Would you get voted the greatest ever player at that switch today? Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's a normal a normal petition if you want to call it that. Or I don't see why why not because the type of player he was. And we said there's one after Bobby Robson, and I watched the documentary actually the other night about Bobby Robson. It was absolutely brilliant, uh, and it just shows you how well he done for here and then the rest of his career. So uh, I, I I love it in the past because I think it's really important. As I said before, but you respect it and what people have done. But we'll never be as good as that. That's that's the bottom line. But we've got a chance to have our own little hat at it. But that year was a, was a special year. Thank you. Did you find it in, <coughs> sorry, Paul? Did you find it inspiring watching Bobby's build? I just I just thought it was, it was brilliant <coughs> just because the success the man had, not just in this country, Holland, Portugal, Spain, like incredible and won titles everywhere he went and I think going and doing that in different countries uh, and trying to learn different languages and different cultures was, was incredible. It, wa- it wasn't anything other than I want just the career of the guy and how it kind of uh, went. I thought it was, I thought it was fascinating and then it's the success that the man had, phew, dear oh dear, was, was to do it in other countries and uh, that takes some going. He didn't always have success, of course. He started at a very modest level, and that must encourage you that, that, that uh, success can be achieved. Yeah, well, I had that across no far from here. That's right. So I know I know what success is like. I know what success is like as a footballer. People automatically think because I won the Champions League, it must have just have must have just have started there. Started as a mum. So I had to start somewhere. But I had a great upbringing at St. Mary, and it's great. Parents and who helped me in the 
and the great players at St Mirren when I was growing up who made me kind of battle hard and then met my mother. So everybody's got to start somewhere. And, and you don't, you're very fortunate if you can walk into something that's booming at the time. But uh, yeah, so I know, I know what, uh, I certainly know what hard work is, that's for sure. Thank you. All right. Thanks, All right. Thanks, so you can have a drink. You can have a drink up there. <laughs> yeah, you can have a, honestly, that's that's there. I know some of you are alcoholics, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mel, no, Mel, no, 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 no,